This video will cover the topic of occupational ergonomics. We will also discuss and demonstrate the use of electromyography, or EMG, in assessing jobs for physical risk factors that can result in cumulative trauma disorders. What is ergonomics? Ergonomics is the study of people at work. The primary goal of ergonomics is to reduce stress and eliminate injuries and disorders associated with the overuse of muscles, bad posture, and repeated tasks. This is accomplished by designing tasks, workspaces, controls, displays, tools, lighting, and equipment to fit the employee's physical capabilities and limitations. The primary goal of ergonomics is to design jobs for adjustability. Workers have diverse body dimensions and capabilities, so designing workstations that can be adjusted is necessary to allow each worker to have a comfortable environment to work within. Ergonomists assess jobs for physical risk factors that result in injuries and redesign these jobs to eliminate risks. Often these improvements in how a work area is designed also have benefits in increased productivity by reducing the discomfort the worker experiences and minimizing the unnecessary movements a job requires. Unlike safety and industrial hygiene, there are not currently any federal regulations for ergonomic hazards. However, the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health and the American Conference of Governmental Industrial Hy Hygienists, as well as other organizations, have ergonomic guidelines for employers to use when designing jobs. In addition to organizations supplying guidelines, the Human Factors and Ergonomic Society, or HFES, promotes the field of ergonomics through hosting conferences, funding research, and publishing that research. Ergonomists are specifically interested in reducing physical risk factors that can lead to injuries or illnesses. These include non-neutral postures, such as extended overhead work, high force, high repetition, vibration, and environmental conditions such as cold environments. Cold environments restrict blood flow, which adversely affects the circulatory system, which brings healthy oxygen to the extremities and removes waste efficiently. Some examples of common ergonomic related injuries or illnesses that you may be familiar with are carpal tunnel syndrome, lateral epicondylitis, commonly known as tennis elbow, and tendonitis. In order to understand the impact of physical risk factors, ergonomists use tools to measure them. Electromyography, or EMG, is a popular method of measuring phys these physical risk factors that can lead to injuries. When a muscle experiences contraction, an electrical signal is sent to the muscle group that enables it to recruit muscle fibers and perform the necessary task such as lifting a box. In general, the greater the electrical signal, the greater the number of muscle fibers being recruited to perform the task. By using electrodes on the surface of the muscle, we can measure the electrical signal or activity in the muscle. This technology is called electromography, and pictured above is an example of muscle activation between two different muscle groups. EMG systems contain some major components that allow them to collect data. The first is the electrode, shown in the picture as A, which is secured on the muscle group that the ergonomist is interested in examining. A computer, shown as B, is needed to receive and process the data. A data logger, shown as C, is used to transmit via Bluetooth the data or store it on an SD card. Finally, a special electrode called a reference electrode is used as a ground in order for the EMG system to have a reference for what should be no muscle activity. The reference electrode is placed on a bony landmark such as the elbow or the collarbone as these areas are not going to have any electrical activity. One common way to make sense of EMG data, or as it's referred to, normalize the data, 
is to take a maximum voluntary contraction, or MVC, of the muscle group that you are interested in. To take an MVC, the muscle group is held in place while the subject exerts as much force as possible contracting the muscle group. Because there is no movement of the muscle or body segment during contraction, this is referred to as an isometric contraction. By gathering the MVC, other subsequent tasks can be compared to this value. For example, a subject completes an MVC of the deltoid muscle group. The subject is then asked to pick up a 50 pound sack of potatoes. When comparing the electrical signals, we can state that lifting the sack of potatoes required about 20% of the maximum voluntary contraction value. EMG can be useful in comparing how physically demanding different jobs can be. A recent study conducted by Auburn OSC researchers involved hand planting forestry workers, as pictured. These workers carry large bags of seedlings and use a spade to dig holes. High forces are required to carry and thrust the spade into the soil to dig the holes for the seedlings. This is also very repetitive work putting continuous stress on the same muscle groups. Ergonomists use judgment and data to determine which muscle groups should be studied. As stated, high force and high repetition jobs put muscles, joints, tendons, and ligaments under high stress which can result in injury. By using EMG, the ergonomist can gather data and a better understanding of the risks associated with a job. This is uh, one of our EMG systems that we use here for research. So if you look here, there are three inputs. This one is attached to my right arm. This one, this electrode is attached to my left arm. And then this is a reference electrode, which we attach to a bony landmark, which is attached to my clavicle. And so now I'm just gonna show you real quick uh, some of the signals that we would look at and uh, kind of how the system works a little bit more. So Rong's gonna come over here and show you the computer screen for our outputs. So the top line there, the red line is my right arm and the green line is my left arm, the deltoid muscle groups. So I'm gonna do a deltoid flexion with a 20 pound weight and we'll be able to see on the computer that muscle activation, especially in reference to my left deltoid, which is not going to be doing anything. So as I do a flexion, you can see the large spike in muscle activation. Now I'm gonna rest that arm and do the same thing with the left arm so that you can see that it's picking up only the muscle group that's being activated. So with that data from an occupational standpoint, we can actually see which muscle groups are being affected while the worker is working, which we would not be able to tell in many instances without this technology.